Well, I come to you this evening from the conductor's podium here in his chair and stand. <clears throat> you know, when you see a skilled choir perform, when you go to a beautiful performance, what you're actually experiencing is agreement. In this choir, they have all agreed to sing perfectly and expertly the uh, style and tempi. Uh, the words are pronounced correctly so the audience can understand. The uh, dynamics are set to where uh, we can hear the important parts of the music speak. When we come to this agreement, what we're actually able to do is fulfill our destiny. And that destiny is that we're able to have an effective, meaningful communication with our audience. There are five non-musical things uh, that I do that actually have a profound influence on our musical performance, the things that we do musically. The first, choose well. Every semester, I audition my university singers. Uh, you may be surprised to know that the last thing that I look for is a beautiful voice with power. I'm interested in other things. I'm looking for students who are interested in detail because great art requires detail. I'm interested in students who are aware. They're aware of their surroundings. They're aware of how they present themselves in public in an audition or a performance. But most of all, I'm interested in students who have courage. Courage to receive instruction and courage to take that instruction and make change. That's difficult. Imagine right now if I ask one of you to stand up and sing something for me and let me work with you a little bit. You've got to admit your first feeling is terror, afraid. You're not comfortable doing that. I'm looking for students who have overcome that fear and can do very well. Point two. Look me in the eyes. Well, a lot of studies have shown that the average audience listens through their eyes rather than through their ears. Well, so that means what they see ultimately determines what they hear. You know, it's the same thing when you're working with a choir. Effective communication requires eye contact. In fact, a great rehearsal is like a conversation between good friends. You know, you go to the coffee shop, you see people sitting and talking to each other when they're not on their phones, that is. But there's a lot of good, meaningful uh, conversation going on, both intellectual and emotional. That's what I'm trying to do with my choral rehearsal, a meaningful dialogue. So I communicate to my choir several ways, but most importantly, through my conducting gesture. I try to show them how soft I want them to sing possibly, maybe how smooth I would like them to sing a certain romantic style phrase, for instance, or uh, I can even tell them when I want them to stop singing by a circular release. But sometimes I have to use words, although I don't like to use them very often. Now, the choir responds to me in this conversation by singing the passage of music, and I can tell them if they, I can tell them, excuse me, if they have understood what I've said to them or not. Then this thing goes on as a cycle for the entire period. But you know, you have to be very careful because whenever you have a great conversation, you know how you sit down and then you look at your clock and realize that an hour has gone by, but it only feels like three or four minutes. That's what happens to us when we have a great rehearsal. Now, I've talked a lot about having this conversation and the way we converse with the choir. We have to remember that I try very hard to keep this conversation positive. I don't tell my choir what they've done wrong. I spend most of my time showing them what they need to do to make it right. Point three, 
There's no app for preparation. Preparation is hard work. Uh, we probably, with our university singers, give three major performances a semester. That's a lot of music to learn. But what I want to do to my students is give them the gift, and I like to call it the gift of preparation. To be prepared allows many wonderful things to happen when you have a musical experience. Now, great preparation is methodical. It starts with clearly defined goals that I put to calendar. So my students can look at a calendar and know, wow, our preparation is right on time. Uh-oh, we're a little bit behind or we're even ahead sometimes. And what I find is, is this is very intrinsically motivating to my choral students and I don't have to intervene or pump them up and get them going. They do this themselves and it's very effective. Repertoire challenges, now that's the music that I'm choosing for every concert. It has to be significant, but it cannot be severe. In other words, when I choose music, I wanna make sure that it's not so hard that we're just white knuckled in our approach to doing this. It kills all the joy in the music making process and quite frankly, you hear that in the performance. Um, my real goal, anytime I'm preparing a concert segment, is that I have my choir prepared at least one week in advance. Then we can back off of the music. This gives me a whole week for that music to simmer inside them. Then we come back in a week later and we sing our music. It comes back with a brand new freshness and we always perform it at a higher level. Now in the meantime during that week, I like to do some other things. Perhaps I'll bring out music to start preparing for another concert that's coming uh, toward the end of the semester. Or my favorite thing to do is to take the choir to the concert hall, our Kofak recital hall, and put them up on the risers and we and effectively change our formations so that we can tune the choir to the hall and get the best possible acoustical experience from the hall. It really does make a big difference. But you can't do that unless you're prepared on the music. Uh, just so you know, at the end of this session, let me say that uh, we don't really worry about performance at all. In fact, we seldom think about it. What my university singers thinks about is having a great musical experience, not practice, but a musical experience every day. And the outcome of that is simply that we don't have to think about the concert. The concert will take care of itself. Point four, grades are an obstacle. I do believe that every person selected to be in university singers wants to succeed and they want to do very, very well. I teach the singers to focus on the music and certainly not the grades that has nothing to do with our musical performance. The assignments that we do in class, maybe I'll stand up and have them sing their parts for me in quartets or octets, or I'll check their score markings to make sure we're all doing the right thing. That's, those are not graded assignments. All they let me do is hear and see my choir from the inside. So I really know what's going on as they're performing. Uh, and then, uh, I use it only for diagnostic purposes so that I can alter the things that I have to teach them at the subsequent rehearsals. Um, by the way, in Alfie Cohn's book, Punished by Rewards, he mentions that there are at least 70 studies showing that extrinsic motivators like praise, rewards, and A's, by the way, are not only ineffective but very counterproductive to the task at hand. And I believe that 100%. My last point five, provide more questions than answers. I see some university singers people out in the audience and I see them nodding as I give these points. I'm glad you've noticed this. I find that the Socratic method is motivating and a very powerful way to teach. By providing questions to my students rather than answers, that we promote critical thinking. And that's important, particularly in this day and age. Now, with this approach, 
the concepts stick. Students remember. And the great thing about that is we're not doomed to repeating the same rehearsal day in and day out. It gives a wonderful freshness to the rehearsal sequence. In effect, I spend much of my time bringing out in students what is innate, what they instinctively already know. I just help them put it together into a meaningful understanding that we can apply in our rehearsals. In short, I provide an opportunity for my singers to find for themselves success and fulfillment in performing choral music. Thank you very much.